today we're going to be talking about my first documentary, Against the Grain. If you're watching this video, you probably have seen it already. But if you haven't, definitely go check it out. I'll leave a link to it in the comments below. In particular, we're going to talk about how we came up with the story, how I found my character, and how we went about filming the documentary and editing and the whole process. The whole journey actually started when I enrolled in an AOD course. AOD is an online documentary filmmaking course called Art of Documentary. It's created by a fellow YouTuber, Mark Bone and Michael Dalmonte. Mark has been one of my favorite YouTubers ever since I got into filmmaking. His channel is super informative and valuable for beginner filmmakers like myself. Just when I had enrolled in the course, AOD started a one day doc competition. This means that you had to film a documentary in just one day or 24 hours. You could plan for as much as you want and you could edit for as much as you want. But of course there was a deadline, so I guess editing is not unlimited, but yeah. And the reason they do this is to encourage beginner filmmakers to get out there and get some experience without going for a big project with a big budget and many filming days and terabytes of footage to go through. Because sometimes that can be a little bit daunting and then you don't end up working on it. But in this way, when you work on a one day doc, you have much less footage and it makes it much more accessible to get started. So once I decided I was going to go for the one day doc, I needed to come up with a story. And I thought of filming with Arian already for a while because he is a beautiful spoon carver. He taught me how to carve my first spoon and ever since we've been carving together, which is a lot of fun. And I thought that for a documentary, it could be very visually interesting to film the process as well. But the story really came together because as someone who lives in the city and longs to be out in nature, I look at Arian's life with a little bit of envy and I see him living in his camper with his cats and in a beautiful community where he works and carves spoons on his doorstep surrounded by a beautiful forest, which sounds lovely to me. So. When he expressed to me one day that he struggled sometimes to carve even a single spoon, this was quite a shock to me. So when the one day doc came around, I thought, wow, this would be a great opportunity to explore his struggle a little bit deeper, learn something for myself and maybe help him figure out something along the way. This is now a good opportunity for me to introduce Arian as well, as I've asked him to share a little bit about his take on making the documentary. Here he is. So hey Julian, uh, you asked me to share my experience on the video, the making of the video. So uh, that's what I'm doing here. Like. From the moment that you asked me if I was interested in doing the movie with you, I felt very enthusiastic. Because for me, it, it was a way of paying attention to something that was dear to me, I think. Giving attention to something that is dear to me. And that the if I get a possibility to do that, I always say yes. Even though it's sometimes uh, a little bit exciting, but... So yeah, because I know you and we do spoon carving together and we always have great conversations that made me just want to say, yes, we're going to do it. Let's get this together. So the, uh, there was an immediate yes. So once I knew that Ariane was on board, the next steps were for me to figure out exactly what the story was going to be, to write a script. I also needed a sound guy because I work mostly with camera and my sound skills are not the best. So I knew I would rather just get someone who I trust to focus on the sound, allowing me to focus on the camera and the directing. So I reached out to a good friend of mine, Luke, uh, who is someone I work with quite often on set, who I know is fun to work with and reliable when it comes to sound recording. And of course, I've asked him to share a little bit about his experience as well. So, here he is. Hi, my name is Luc Compeer. I did sound for uh, Against the Grain with Julian. Uh, we had two-man crew. Julian was video, I was audio. 
The, the thing I'm really proud of in this, in this movie regarding sound is that every sound we used was recorded on the location we filmed at. Uh, so we're talking uh, the chopping of the wood, the carving of the spoon, the birds and the music. We all recorded it uh, over there at the camping in Drenthe in the forest. While we were filming, we were talking about like recording Aryan playing his acoustic guitar and using that as the background music. I wasn't really sold on it. I didn't really know if that was going to work. Uh, and I didn't know if I had the right equipment to, to record that. Uh, but in the end, like the, the last day, we decided, let's just do it, let's just record it. Um, and I'm glad we did, because I got home, I processed the, the audio, I sent it to Julian, and we, he put it under the video, and I really liked how it sounded. It just very much fit the vibe of this uh, like calm forest uh, area, uh, and I'm really glad that we used that music. So the process of filming started with us arriving the day before. We just checked out his camper van a bit, uh, walked around the forest, talked about our ideas and the script, and started getting a bit of a shot list together in terms of where we're going to film the interview and how we're going to film the process of making the spoon. And the idea was to film the interview first, which is what Mark Bone recommends on his Art of Documentary course. Start with the interview make notes and get a feel for what you can film in the b-roll segment of your film. But I didn't do that. <laughs> I already had a pretty good idea of what I wanted to film in terms of the process and the b-roll. So we just did that first, uh, which maybe wasn't the best decision, but it also wasn't too bad. I think it worked out quite well. Like it gets so deep that it kind of feels funny to put words to it because it's so beautiful. And then with that come the moments where you don't feel, feel this beauty while you know it is there. And that's, that can be like difficult sometimes. Like the process of finding the right shot so they would be interesting or what or so it would be what we were looking for. It's very interesting to look for this process, doing some takes a couple of times, and also in the conversations, trying to find the right questions, and actually getting somewhere where you didn't really know that you were going. Uh, so the discovery part of it was really amazing as well. I think maybe that's what I love most about the day, the conversations that we got into because we were making this movie. The interview didn't go so well, to be honest. Um, I was over-directing, which means that I was giving him too many cues and trying to uh, get information out of him that I wanted to hear as the director and I was asking him to respond in a certain way because I thought this would be the best way for the documentary making it a little bit uncomfortable for him to really open up and share what was on his mind and what was on his heart. So that led us to having to take a break and trying to refigure out how we're going to do the interview and while we were sitting together in his camper van just talking about the script figuring out what it what it was that we wanted to share, he ended up expressing so easily things that I would love him to say on camera. But that just led me to think that instead of trying to do a sit down interview with him, I would just have a conversation with him and we would talk openly about making the script for the documentary while the camera was recording. Uh, so we tried that and it worked out really well. I just sat there with my computer taking notes um, I would say something or ask a question and say what do you think of this question and he would respond and while he was responding and talking openly and sharing uh, the things that came up for him I just kept silent and a uh, huge shout out to Luke doing the sound he was boom operating that whole time I think it was maybe a two-hour interview where he was holding the boom mic. So with the success of the second interview and having already recorded some b-roll and footage of him carving the day before, we were now ready to edit. 
I invited Luke over to my place and we looked through the footage together, re-watched the interview uh, because we still weren't 100% sure about where the story was going and what the focus should be. And it wasn't until the editing room where we uh, watched our last interview and we heard something about this saboteur and it just slowly started to click that maybe this was really what our movie was going to be about. So, I am the big saboteur. <laughs> I, it's me. <laughs> so it was a very interesting process going through the documentary and not fully knowing where it was going, uh, but just trusting the process and then going through the edit and trying to figure out, okay, how can we piece this together in a way that makes sense, but also uh, speaks truly and authentically to what Ariane was trying to share with us. So with the help of Luke and my partner, we managed to figure out a focus for the documentary, The Saboteur. But now I only had seven days to edit the whole documentary until the deadline for the competition which definitely was not enough. So that draft that I sent to the competition, I actually also sent to my trusted feedback crew, who critiqued the hell out of it. And this is one of my favorite parts of the process, in, especially with my films and in this particular film, was that it received a lot of criticism. My aunt actually said that she didn't like it. So that was a bit of a hard pill to swallow, but a necessary one. With the feedback and criticism that I got from everyone, I made what is now online today, which I absolutely love and couldn't be happier with. So once I made all the adjustments that I got from my feedback crew, I decided that it was time to submit the film to film festivals, which I had never done before. So this was a bit of a process to figure out how much did they cost? Uh, what was the process? Which ones were good ones to send to? and yeah, kind of just figure that out. In the end, I submitted the film to 15 different festivals and I ended up waiting months and months and months for all of them to respond whether Against the Grain got selected or not. And in the end, we got selected into two festivals, which was a huge win for me as my first documentary to get selected even into one festival would have been amazing, but to get selected in two, was even better. So after the film festival route, we decided to do live screenings. One of the screenings we did at the location, the community in which we filmed the documentary, which had a huge turnout of 60 to 70 people. Ariane played some music, Luke came and geeked out on the sound, <laughs> and the people at the Ullespiegel hosted us with a lovely meal and warm vibes. <laughs> The second location was in Amsterdam, which was a bit more intimate with just 30 people, uh, a lot of whom were friends and family of mine. So that was a great experience. For both screenings, we had a Q&A session, which was a lot of fun and people brought up some really interesting questions. And one of my favorite parts was just seeing how relatable the topic was for a lot of people, which brings me to how it has been received on YouTube. I posted the documentary about two and a half months ago and right now it's sitting on about 80,000 views. Which I don't know about you, but for me that is huge. I was already super pleased and excited to hit 1,000 views after just two weeks. And when I was watching the curve, it slowly started to taper off. So I thought, okay, so it's gonna stay around 1,000 views. I'm happy with that. It was pretty much the amount of views that I hoped for. so no harm done, but it just continued to grow and grow and grow. And eventually it hit an exponential spike where it went from 5,000 views to 20,000 views in just a week. Now we're on 80,000 views. So it's just continuing to grow and grow and grow, uh, which is amazing to see. And a lot of the comments have been about how relatable the topic has been for people. A lot of people find it inspiring how Arian opened himself up to share this struggle in his life. And I guess just a lot of people found the beauty in that. Yeah, and also now the reactions are amazing. 
like how many times it's been viewed and how people are responding and recognizing and also people coming with with advice I wouldn't say advice but their own insights on how to deal with things or look at things they are really uh, valuable to read so it's very inspiring it has been very inspiring for me what has happened afterwards also doing the the nights where we showed the movie a couple of times and I would play some of my songs and then talk to people afterwards and seeing all this recognition recognition yeah it's beautiful it feels like very rewarding and very good to have uh, put it out there so definitely thank you for that for being able to do that for using me <laughs> to do that thank you for watching uh, the film I'm very glad to see all the comments uh, and all the likes on the video it's very uh, it's very fulfilling um, and shout out to that guy in the comments who uh, said he liked my music uh, because it's not it's Aryan's music please check out Aryan uh, Aryan's music <laughs> All right, uh, that's it for me. Luc and Peer signing off. Bye bye. Dag, dag hoor, dag, dag hoor. So this whole process has been really inspiring for me that I could make a film from my heart with two good friends of mine and we could just be excited about it and make it the way we wanted to make it and not feel the pressure of having to make it for a client who wants it done in a certain way. We could just do it our way. And for me, that made it much more of an artistic process, a process that I could enjoy. And when we got to the end of it and all the people loved it and YouTube went crazy, it just meant so much more to us. All right, guys, so that's been the process of making the documentary. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know that I've learned so much from making Against the Grain that I hope I can apply that knowledge to new documentaries that I'm working on at the moment and that I can also help to share that with you on this channel. If that sounds good to you, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.